Welcome back to the Taupo Event Centre for the 61st running of the Lion Foundation New Zealand Indoor Bowls Championship. We've already found our first uh, finalist and it is George Sabu from the Waikato region. And this is the second semi-final. Once again, I'm joined in commentary by uh, Grant Rayner, New Zealand Indoor Bowls captain, as we welcome the two uh, participants out onto the mat, Keith Setter and Rob Wilson. Rob Wilson from South Otago, Keith Setter from uh, just down the road in the sunny Bay of Plenty from Tauranga. And are we expecting the same sort of close competition here, Grant? Yes, I'd expect the same sort of game as the last game. I think the floor seems to dictate a draw game, and um, these two bowlers are very good draw, draw bowlers. I don't know much about Rob Wilson. Possibly the underdog in this game. Um, Keith Setter has been in two finals before. He's won a New Zealand triples in 1998, and he was runner-up in the New Zealand triples in 1995. And he is also a North Island representative back in 2000 and 2001. So... At this end of a tournament, he's he's been there. So he knows what to expect. Rob, though, he'll be making the most of his opportunity, I'd imagine. And they don't come around very often at this end of the tournament, so he's putting his hand up now. Well, Rob's obviously a team player because he's uh, a uh, fours champion for the South Island in his uh, resume. But you don't get here with by being a fluke gee. You've got to sort of be the creme de la creme. It's just consistency. And um, that's what gets you here. And um, very rarely do you see anyone that gets this far in a tournament that, um, that flukes their way. You have to have a few flukes on the way to get this far after playing all these hours and all these games. So this will be their eighth or ninth game, depending on which round they started this morning. And um, yeah, you just, you just can't get here on sheer luck. Ability plays a huge part now. Once again, this head building very nicely. This is the first end of 12. It's the second semi-final. Looking for finalists for the singles competition. Keith's been in the wilderness for about 10 years. But, um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's always sniffing around. He's maybe, you know, he gets down, and gets down in tournaments. But this is his first result at national level for about 10 years. So he'll be making the most of this opportunity as well, saying, hey, don't forget about me. Well, that's right, he was part of the uh, winning triples combination in 1998. So as we mentioned before in the first semi-final, if you saw that, you know, that these guys, uh, the longevity in the sport, that's 1998, right. a fair old while ago now. I remember it because he beat me in that final. <laughs> what is it with you and being <laughs> beaten, <Yeah. Grant? laughs> Hey, maybe I just can't win. No, those are the only two finals I've lost, Phil. <laughs> but, yeah, as I said before, to get, to the, get this far in a tournament at national level... Uh, it's it's a pretty good effort. And it's a great uh, first end there for Yellow. Taking first blood. Black, a little bit nervous start there. Was holding the shot, but there's three other bowls were a bit loose and uh, he'll be wanting to improve. Keith gets on with the job, doesn't he? He does. He's, he's no a, messing around. He's a bit like a terrier. If he sn sniffs weakness, he, he'll, he'll chase you down. And he'll keep at you and keep at you. He will not give up. That's his, that's his way, oh Keith. That's a pretty good reply from uh, Rob Wilson, though. Rob looks pretty relaxed. Doesn't look phased at all. You talked before in the first semi-final about the uh, the floor here. Wooden floor as opposed to concrete floor, that's kind of the two variances, isn't it? Yeah, there's, there's, yeah that's pretty much right. Uh, you can play on, we, we play on different types of floors. This is a traditional spring, timber sprung floor, stadium floor, um, laid over a concrete slab, one would imagine. And um, that's a great, great bowl from Black. And... In, in big stadiums, there's, there's patches of the floor which aren't as good as other patches of the floor, so there's a lot of variance in the, in the mats. Does the mat take out some of that variance, or does it accentuate? No, the mat's pretty thin. Um, it doesn't really 
it can't it doesn't hide the defects in the floor um, this mat appears to be reasonably good though for the, 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 the pick for the final it's a good spot the greens seem to be nice and big the last semi-final seemed to play very well oh and that's not a good bowl short and narrow he <laughs> He won't like that. No, yeah. maybe that just came out of the hand a He's little bit wrong. He's probably grimacing and smirking away yeah, down the sure other end. Going, mm. Rob's gone up to have a look, though. He's holding shot at the moment. It's not what to be playing. We talked about the mat before. For people that are brand new to indoor bowls, I can tell you that the uh, the green surface is known as the mat. 6.7 metres long, 1.8 metres wide. That little white square you see, that's the delivery square. Yes, and on the delivery, we must be inside the side of the box and in contact with the mat as we let the bowl go over the front line of the of the box we can't on our back swing we can't come out the back of the box and we can't go out the side of the box when we deliver and what's the penalty for that if you do oh the umpire will come and have a word with you and say look uh, you adjust your delivery your bowling foul bowls out the side of the mat and if you keep doing it you'll get them you'll get taken a point off taken off yeah well not a point but the bowl oh the bowl yep so a little bit like a foot fault in tennis. Well, that's a shocker from Yellow. Absolute that's two shocker. two in a row now. And he knows it too, the he, expression on the face. You'll know it. And Rob will take full advantage of this. That'll, and Well, that's a shocking end from Black and a shocking end from Yellow now. <laughs> well, that's a great recovery from Black after that first end. And uh, that'll give him a little bit of confidence. Oh, Keith started with a hiss and a roar, but Rob's come straight back at him. Something for Keith to work on, definitely. He'll know that. He's good enough to recover from that. And um, That's if he hasn't given this guy too much confidence now, thinking, oh, actually, I might be able to win this. Is there a bit of that in it? Oh, definitely. If, if you can get a few good ends, like yep. Black just got then, and you're away, you're gone, you start playing... Some mind games you come start, into it. Oh, you, you start playing some really good shots. Your pressure goes off. You just start to relax. Things start going your way. The other guys are trying all sorts of things to to, to even just score. And um, well, it's like they always say, isn't it? Number two always chase, always uh, tries harder. He's the chaser. He's That's got right. work to do. That's right. Well, Keith seems to be going this way. Okay. I'll see if he, he goes back the other way. We'll keep an eye on how he handles going back the other way again. And we've seen that before too, haven't we? A variance in either end. That's right. And um, sometimes some bowlers go a lot better than the other bowler going the other way. This could be one of those games. We'll find out. So this is Keith Setter. Oh, this is going to go through the gate, isn't it? No, he's got it. Right on the jack. Yep, he looks like he might like going this way, Phil. He likes going this way. Well, just on the backhand now for Black, just to draw the jack off the off the yellow or sit on the yellow. He's not wide enough. Looks like these mats, he's got a lucky rub to get a bit closer, but uh, looks like this mat takes good green, both hands. He's going to have to go right to the edge of the mat to get onto that jack. Or he's going to have to play more aggressively and harder to take the yellow. So Keith will go really wide here. Go really wide. Almost off the side. It's like you're sitting on his shoulder. And he has. Oh, he's gone so no. wide. Yeah, well, he had to go wide. There was no point being narrow. He was going to have nothing narrow. So anyway, he's not going to help you, Keith. Does this now go advantage, Rob? Well, only if Rob's elected for the heavier, narrower line. And that hasn't worked for him either. It hasn't either, worked either. So, Keith. Keith has to draw to the middle of the uh, white line on the front of the box for a second shot, pretty pretty much. So, it's just drawing to the spot, is what we like to say. Just draw to the spot, Keith, for two. He's a bit narrower this time. Doesn't want to get another one off the green. He's going to go through the spot. He's going to rub onto oh. the spot. Look at that. <laughs> oh, what a prediction. But I don't know if it's good enough, though. There's a bit of luck involved there, and they say uh, I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> and there was luck in that. 
Not enough for two, though. He's only got one, but uh, almost. Right, now, Keith. Shocker. Last time going this way. This time, improvement needed. So Keith on the backhand, then we should probably explain the difference between forehand and backhand. Well, yes, um, if you're right-handed and you go, obviously, to the right side of the mat, that's your forehand. And um, if you go the other way, that's your backhand. So there's a forehand and a backhand. And um, they're both electing to play different sides of the mat. This end. And as we watch it, maybe to make it even simpler, at the back end, you, you, the arm crosses your body, doesn't it? It goes across your body. Yeah, it depends on your delivery. Sometimes it can go across your body the other way, but that's a, um, four, that's a backhand from uh, Keith now. Black has changed, forced him to change his hand, and that's a good bowl. Now Black will play the forehand. This I'm not sure if that's is that, is that wide enough, Phil. It Ooh, is. Oh, it is. It Just. is wide enough. Mm. Well, it's a bit of thrust and parry in the early stage of this, the second semi final. <laughs> He's shaking his head. He thought he was wider than that, I think. Maybe he thinks, man, I'm lucky to be close to the jack. I thought I was narrow. Right, Keith. On the draw, too. Forehand draw shot. A bit of pace. It's got the shot. No, I think he no, Black's rolled maybe back not. in. Yeah, but, yeah. Black's still holding. Now, Black's got no position, and that black, that back yellow is where he needs to be. That's where the jack's going to go. By the looks of that, if he, if that black gets hit, the jack's going to move backwards. He'll play the same as his last, but he want to be a little bit wider and draw between those two yellows. That would be my pick. Expert comments once again coming from Grant Rayner. And that's not Rob's pick, though. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing aggressive. He's going to scatter them. Well, it went to the back yellow, but his blacks left the head. I thought maybe that might have been his last bowl to play, not not his third. He, if he'd drawn to that back yellow first, then there may have been a black there for him to hit the jack too. But he's got it out of there. He's got it out of there, and... Um, The way he played that, he looked like he was playing as though he was down. So, didn't look like he was down, though, Phil. No, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. Maybe he's just trying to get rid of the yellows. And, um, well, there we go. Four yellows. Looks like four. This is looking a bit ominous here. Not always the best thing to be drawing to. There's holes all over the place here. If you were in this situation, Grant, what would you do? No, forehand, just like this. Just like this? Yep, but you wouldn't want to find the hole. And he hasn't. He's but he's trailed the jack. Down half a hole, but he's cut it to one. He's cut it to one, yep. so it's a good recovery from Rob Wilson. Very good. A little bit lucky, I think. A little bit lucky that um, that, that third shot didn't cost him more than one shot. Now, you but think that this is Keith's lucky end. Well... He seemed to have played better up this end of the mat than he did in the others. I wonder if it'll happen this time as well. Yep. This is Keith Setter from Tauranga. He's playing Rob Wilson from South Otago. There he is, right on the jack. He likes going this way. Well, it's not too bad over there. He won't be happy. He's narrow and possibly short, but the jack could end up over that side of the mat, the way that's his um, lining up. <laughs> and that side black could definitely be in the play now. That jack it could spring out sideways now. There's a sandwich between the two yellows somewhat. Rob just doesn't want to play these shots too early. That's all right. Opened it up. 
Keith right on the jack now, and Rob's in big trouble. Anything within an inch of that jack here. And Rob's going to have to play a pretty good bolt. And that's a very good bowl from Keith. It's behind. Jack's still going out sideways, going up 12 o'clock. That Jack goes up the mat at 12 o'clock by hitting the a nice weighted shot from the black onto the Jack, squeezing the yellow. Here it comes. That's what he's looking for, but he's... Oh, oh. Whoa, what, a, <laughs> what a result. <laughs> Great result. He's going to tell you that was planned. I was oh. going to do that all along. I don't know. But I He's don't know. got a bit of a smile. The result's there for all to see. It was great weight. And um, when you're down, you've got to be up. The old saying. Deep yeah. in concentration, yep. as Keith said. Just wants to just... Oh, Ooh, he's not happy with it. I don't know. Is that a happy thump or a bad... I think it's a bad thump. No, I'm a happy thump. <sighs> he says. Bother. Just before we watch Rob go up to the head, I want to ask you about this because I use the, the analogy of a tennis shot. You know, have you, you're playing tennis and you're setting up your partner and you're probably setting up the winning shot two or three shots before. You yep. mentioned it before. You've got to watch what the bowl's going to do and you've got to predict in your mind yes. what you think it will do. How, one, how do you learn that? Is it just experience? And how do you use that to your advantage? You, it's, it's experience, Phil, um, by playing lots and lots of bowls and um, you get to know what angles the bowls are going to be hitting the jack at and how much pace is going to be generated from that and where you need to be on the mat to counteract and catch that kitty. It's a whole lot of factors in there, but it's just basically experience and um, skill. Natural ability won't... won't um, yeah, he's a very, sweat, <laughs> very sweaty man, is old Keith. Oh, look at that. He's got a big puddle of sweat. <laughs> well, we are playing on a basketball court <laughs> and the similarities here. Oh, look, it's been too much for oh. some in the crowd. Oh. Keith oh, dear. had to... Oh, there's no need for that, she would have said. No, he didn't have to bear his tummy <laughs> to us. And what a tummy it was. Oh. All bought and paid for, though, I guess, Grant. Well, there's a big sign in the stadium. No uh, anti-spill drink bottles only. Obviously, the Coke bottle doesn't come under that category.